Hey, this is Mr. Aiden. This is the last video of Unit 5, Analytical Applications of Differentiation, and many students say that this is the hardest topic of Unit 5. Um, optimization problems. I, I don't know if it's the hardest in this concept, this is topic of Unit 5. Um, what it is, it's, it's a big puzzle that you're using what we've developed in Unit 5 in order to do real-world applications. You're trying to optimize something. So what does it mean to optimize something? It means that you're, do, you're trying to make it the best. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to find the maximum or the minimum. You're trying to find, uh, in an application problem, maybe the maximum profit that you could find ching ching right or maybe ha the, what's the minimum amount of material you can use to get the maximum benefits okay and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through four main optimization problems and in class we're gonna do many variations of these problems but they're all very very similar to these and they're called optimization problems okay and so right away you can see in this first problem it says what is the smallest possible sum right away you can see smallest what is smallest is they're asking you what's the, the minimum? What's the optimization of this problem? And so we are looking for the smallest possible sum of the squares of two numbers if their product is 16. So the key to doing optimization problems is you need two equations. You need two equations. You need equations that are going to help you to optimize something. So the first equation is this. is the, the the product of two numbers is negative 16. Okay, there is right here the product is negative 16. So let's develop an equation for that. X times Y, two numbers, when uh, the product multiplying them equals negative 16. That is one of the equations that we have. Okay, now th that is it's kind of like called a constraint, I believe, something like that. And so now we're going to do this: is we're going to develop an equation for the sum of the squares of two numbers, the sum of the squares of two numbers, okay? So the sum, I'm going to put s as sum of the squares of two numbers. So I'm going to square x and square y. So I'm adding these two numbers up to get the sum. And we want to optimize this sum right here. This is what we're optimizing, optimizing which means that this is what we're going to take the derivative of, if that makes sense. Which means we have to use this red equation here to substitute in for one of these equations. So what do we know? y equals negative 16 over x, don't we, when we solve that. And we're going to plug that bad boy right in for y. So we have s is equal to x squared plus negative 16, negative 16 over x squared. Okay, and this is where your calculator really helps out, your TI Inspire calculator. Because when we optimize, we're going to take the derivative. So you can plug in this function, you can define this function in your TI Inspire. You can take the first derivative, and when we take the first derivative of this, we get 2x minus 512 over x cubed, and we want to set that equal to 0. So in your TI Inspire, you can take the derivative of this function, take the derivative of this function, and then use your function of solve, and you can take that answer, that derivative, set that equal to zero, and solve for x. And that will kick out x is equal to negative four, and x is equal to positive four. Try it on your TI Inspire, it will work. And so what do we know is, we know that these two numbers will give us a product of, of negative 16, won't we? Negative 4 times positive 4 is negative 16. And if we end up putting this in this original function, it will give us the smallest of the possible sum. Okay, the smallest of those sums. And so that is called optimization. That's one problem. Let's go to a second problem. This problem is a very, very famous problem. You've probably seen it in pre-calculus. You've probably seen it in algebra 2. You maybe have seen it in geometry. It just keeps showing up, 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 up. Why does it keep showing up is they want to have you solve it with geometry. And then they want to have you solve it with algebra. Well, guess what? Calculus is the easiest way to solve it. We're trying to find the maximum volume of an open box when we cut this little side here, this little x and this little x, 
and we're going to cut those sides out. So let's say my side over here is 30, and let's say this side over here is 20. This is the type of piece of paper we have. We have 30 inches and 20 inches of piece of paper. We want to make the maximum volume right away. You see maximum, and you say optimization. And so what do I have to do? I know volume equals length times width times height, isn't it? That's my equation. What's my constraint is, I know this height has to be x, doesn't it? This one length has to be 30 minus 2x. Why is it 30 minus 2x? We have our side is 30. We're taking away two of these x's. The other side is going to be 20 minus 2x. So we're taking away this x and this x. Okay, So our length is going to be 20 minus 2x. Our width is going to be 30 minus 2x. Our height is going to be x high. And so what do I do in my calculator? I want to take in my t inspire calculator, you define this function. Now, if you rerun algebra 2 or pre-calculus, we're going to do this. We're going to try to find out to use all of our pre-calc. Guess what? In pre-calculus, algebra 2, geometry, we were doing all this work for nothing because we have an easy way to do it. It's called calculus. Define this in your function. Take the first derivative, set it equal to zero, solve that first derivative equals the zero, and solve for x, and you end up getting x is equal to 3.92 or x is equal to 12.74. Try it in your calculator, your TI Inspire. Now, we have two different values we could have. Now, think of your two values. x could be about 4 inches high or 12.7 inches high. Do you see how if you plug 12.7 back into this, you would have 20 minus 24, 20, almost 25. That doesn't work. It's too big, which means this x value would optimize it. If you wanted to know what the volume is, you would plug that back in your original function, and that would tell you what your maximum volume was in inches cubed, wouldn't it? Okay? That is the open box problem. Okay, let's go to the third type problem. This is where you have two geometric objects. Uh, you did this in geometry. I know you did. Where you had, you're trying to find the largest rectangle inscribed in a circle with some sort of radius. Okay, well, what I like to do in this problem is, I like to split this problem up this way and this way. Which means I have x and x, I have y and y, and you can see how we know that this right here is a radius of 4, that hypotenuse, okay? That is a radius of 4. And I got to develop two equations, okay? We're trying to find the largest area. When you see largest, what do you think? Optimization. The largest area of a rectangle. Area of a rectangle is what? It is base times height, isn't it? Base times height. Uh, what is my equation for my area is my base is x and x, we're going to call that 2x. My height is y and y, which is 2y, which is 4xy. There's my equation for my area. Now let's go to my constraint, okay? My constraint is something that we know, another equation that we know. And you see how I gave a little bit of a triangle right here, okay? A little bit of a triangle. What do we know is x squared plus y squared equals 4 squared or 16, that hypotenuse squared, that radius squared. Which means if I'm going, I, I need to solve for one of these variables here. So I have y squared equals 16 minus x squared. y is equal to the square root of 16 minus, minus x squared. Okay, And when I have this value, I can plug this in for my area equation. So area equals 4 times x times the square root of 16 minus x squared. Okay, And we're going to try to optimize this equation right here. Now what do we do to optimize it? We take our first derivative. We take our first derivative of our function. We set it equal to 0. We solve for x. And if you do that in your calculator, you end up getting x is equal to 2.83, which is... 2 root 2, if you can kind of see that. So what do we know is the largest area would have an x value of 2 root 2. So 
I know my side is going to be 2 root 2 and 2 root 2, which is 4 root 2. Okay, My y value, how do we figure out my y value? Well, we just plug this right back in to find my y value. And you can find out what the area is. Once you know what x is, you know what y is. Once you know what x and y are, you can plug in your original function of a is equal to 4xy. And what do you know? That gives you your area. So that is where we have something inscribed. One last optimization problem. This oftentimes, this is called determine the points on the y equals x squared plus 1 that are closest to this point right up here at 0, 2. Now, a lot of times we try to do this from 0, 0. Same type problem. Okay, We're trying to find out what what's the closest distance or what's the furthest distance or junk like that. Okay, uh, We would do 0, 0 if it was a concave down graph, but here we're doing a point right here. And we want to know what value, if we do the shortest distance between two points as a straight line, what, what value is going to minimize this value? What's the closest? The closest, and you see closest, or minimum, or maximum, or and, and what do you think? Optimization. Okay, so let's kind of take a look at what's going on. I have my my equation for this, and hopefully you can see. My equation, as we try to develop this, is we have some x value, don't we? I'm going to call that x. Okay, it's really x, this point x, minus 0. But we're just called that x because it's minus 0. This value in the y is going to be, is going to be uh, y minus 2. y minus 2. Or you could say 2 minus y, whatever you want. y minus 2, 2 minus y. So I'm going to call it y minus 2. Okay, and we have our hypotenuse here. And we're going to call that d for distance. Okay, so what do we know? We know x squared plus y minus 2 squared equals the shortest distance squared. And we're going to try to optimize this guy right here, which means we need to solve for it. So d equals the square root of x squared plus y minus 2 squared. Now, what do we not like? We don't like that we have x and y in our equation to be able to derive it. We want and we want to solve for y. Well, where do we get y from? Ding, 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 ding. We have it right here. So we can see d is equal to square root of x squared plus x squared plus 1. That's what y is. Minus 2 and all of that guy being squared. So we define this in our calculator. After we define it, we take the derivative. We set that equal to 0. We solve for x. And we end up getting for x 0 0.707 blah, 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 which is root 2 over 2. Root 2 over 2. And if you plug that in your original function right here, root 2 over 2 squared plus 1, we end up getting a y value of 3 halves. So at 0 0.707, which is about right there, and at 1.5, which is right here, okay, you can see this point, if I kind of erase this stuff, this point right here is the closest value you could possibly have, it minimizes this distance d right there. And that when we minimize something, it's called optimization. Optimization. And those are four examples of optimization problems. Again, you're trying to find two equations. You, you're going to substitute into one, so you only have x values or y values. You're going to take the first derivative, set it equal to 0, solve for your x, and that will optimize your problem. Maximums, minimums, optimizing. Have a great day, guys. We'll practice this in class. See you guys. Bye.